Hello everyone and welcome back to part two of our ICD-10 CM coding for the sense conditions as well as respiratory system disorders. So in this video we are going to cover how to code some different respiratory system conditions. Let's start by talking about some common disorders that you might see in the respiratory system. Some common ones that you're going to see as a coder are asthma, bronchitis, laryngitis, pharyngitis, pneumonia, tonsillitis, both acute and chronic respiratory failure, influenza, sinusitis, emphysema, and COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. The coding guidelines are very short for as complicated as the system might be, but I do want to highlight a few of these. So again, the coding guidelines are always in the front of your ICD-10 CM codebook. In my codebook, the chapter specific guidelines start on page six. That's where chapter specific guidelines section C of the official coding guidelines are. And then the respiratory system is chapter 10 of these guidelines. So you wanna to go to C and then 10. And our guidelines, there's A, B, C, and D. So there's only four guidelines. Some have multiple parts. These are on page 14 and 15 of my code book. Your code manual code book might have the different page number, but again, chapter 10, Diseases of the respiratory system are where you can find these guidelines. So the four guidelines that I spoke of are for when to code or how to code, acute exacerbation of chronic obstructive bronchitis and asthma, acute respiratory failure, influenza, and then ventilator associated pneumonia. So make sure and review these. Again, I'm a big fan of making flashcards. One thing I wanted to point out I won't go over all of these in detail. You guys can all read. But one thing I did want to point out is when you get there, pay special attention to acute respiratory failure because the coding guidelines really differentiate if we can code this as a principal diagnosis or as a secondary diagnosis. And it really depends on the documentation of the patient you're coding. So the guidelines tell us that a code from sub subcategory J96.0 for acute respiratory failure or J96.2, which is acute and chronic respiratory failure, may be assigned as a principal diagnosis when it is the condition established after study to be chiefly responsible for occasioning the admission to the hospital. Now that falls right in line with the UHDDS requirements, which again, what we follow as an inpatient coder, right? The UHDDS requirements tell us that our principal diagnosis, the definition is what brought the patient to us after study, right? What warranted the admission after study? So this guideline just supports that. It really goes back to that documentation. Did the patient come in with respiratory failure? Is that what warranted their admission? Or did they have another condition which warranted the admission? And then the respiratory failure would be listed as a secondary condition. And that's the guideline two under this section in our official coding guideline. So B2 is when we would code acute respiratory failure as a secondary diagnosis. So it states that respiratory failure may be listed as a secondary condition if it occurs after admission or if it is present on admission but does not meet the definition of principal diagnosis. So again, that definition is the UHDDS definition of what brought the patient to us after study. So again, just make some flashcards. You wouldn't need very many seven altogether in this section, but the best way to master these coding guidelines is to just memorize them and to apply them. So with applying them, we're gonna jump right into a scenario and we're gonna apply some of these guidelines. So our first scenario here says that we have a 63-year-old patient admitted from Sunny Slope 
assisted living with pneumonia. After workup, it was determined that she had acute pneumococcal lobar pneumonia with influenza. So what code are we going to assign or what codes? So the first thing we're going to always do is identify our main terms, right? Well, we have two here. We have pneumonia and influenza. So do we code these together? Do we code them separate? That's something that you need to answer as a coder. So to start, you can always look things up in the index and see where it takes you. So let's start by first going to P to pneumonia. On page 254 in my book, And then we're going to go to the specific type if we know it, right? Sometimes the documentation, the physician doesn't tell you the type of pneumonia. So you can't always code a specific type. In that case, you would just code the unspecified pneumonia or the, the J18.9. But in this case, we do know our documentation specifically says acute pneumococcal lobar pneumonia. So we're going to go to lobar on page 255 in my book. And once we get to low bar, we're going to even go further and indent down to pneumococcal, which it gives us J13. So now let's flip to the tabular to J13. And it tells us, page 683 in my tabular, J13 is pneumonia due to streptococcus pneumonia. That's what we want to code, right? And then you want to always read the includes and excludes notes. So our notes say code first associated influenza if applicable, meaning if the patient also had influenza, you code that. Then it says code also associated abscess if applicable. Well, one of those applies to us, but not both of them, right? Our documentation did not say anything about an abscess, so we're not coding that because it's not applicable. So we don't follow that note. But we do follow the first note, code first associated influenza, if applicable, because that is applicable. It is documented. So now let's go. You can do this one of two ways. You can look up the codes that are given here, the J09 um, point X1, J10.0 through J11.0, and find your code that way. Or you can just look it up the old fashioned way by going to the index and looking it up. So I'm going to do the old fashioned way. So I'm going to go to influenza in the alphabetical index. So go to I to influenza which is on page 190. And once we get to influenza, if you look under with, we can pick with pneumonia. And specify type. So J11.08. So we have two codes for this scenario, J11.08, which reads influenza due to unidentified influenza virus with specific pneumonia or specified pneumonia, and then J13 for the specific type of pneumonia. Okay, we have one more scenario to do. So in this scenario, our patient is a 56-year-old admitted with SOB, which is shortness of breath, and asthma. After workup, the discharge diagnosis was acute exacerbation of COPD, which is chronic obstruct obstructive pulmonary disease with asthma. Again, if you're not aware of what these abbreviations are, make sure to use a medical dictionary or a peer-reviewed academic source to look these up and reference what these abbreviations mean. So in this scenario, we're coding asthma and COPD, right? We're not coding shortness of breath because that's a symptom of having the asthma and the acute exacerbation of the COPD. So 
We don't code signs or symptoms when we code the disease they're associated with. So let's first start by coding the COPD. So again, that stands for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So we're gonna go to D, to disease in our index. So once we get to disease, we're gonna go to what kind of disease, right? Well, it's pulmonary. So pulmonary disease is on page 105. And then indented under that, we're gonna do the chronic obstructive. And then I can pick with acute exacerbation even, which our scenario says that after the workup, the discharge diagnosis was acute exacerbation of COPD with asthma. So acute exacerbation is what we want. That code is J44.1. So now we're gonna flip to the tabular to J44.1 see what the code description is, make sure it meets our scenario, and then look at the notes. Page 688, it tells us it's chronic obstructive pulmonary disease with acute <clears throat> exacerbation. It tells us it excludes COPD with acute bronchitis. So our documentation does not say anything about acute bronchitis, so these excludes do not belong to us. Then there's two tips that we also wanna read. The first tip says, exacerbation of COPD should not be assumed based upon worsening of a concomitant respiratory disease or when COPD is described as end stage. Again, doesn't apply to us because ours is documented as acute exacerbation. The other tip is, assign J43.9 when COPD exacerbation with emphysema is documented. Again, that one doesn't apply to us because our documentation doesn't say anything about emphysema. But what we are missing is the asthma. Just because a patient has COPD does not mean that he or she would also have asthma, right? They're two different conditions. You can have one without the other. So we also need to code the asthma. So now we're gonna to flip to our alphabetical index to A, to asthma. Which is on page 32 in my coding manual. And so once we get to asthma, we want to code that it's in exacerbation because again, it's documented that it is. So right at the top of asthma, it says with, and then we can pick exacerbation and it says acute in parentheses which is what our exacerbation was. And it gives us J45.901. So now let's flip to J45.901 and see what that tabular definition is on page 689. So J45.901 tells us unspecified asthma with acute exacerbation. There's not any includes or excludes notes that apply to J45.901, so we're set. So the two codes for this scenario are J44.1 and J45.901. So I hope this video was helpful, and remember to make those flashcards for the coding guidelines.